it it's basically the same engine except the the dual carburetors everything else well and the the uh, stainless steel sport exhaust that's that's not stock either but it's got a cam in it uh, aluminum radiator that's not original the tubing none of that is original it's a Ford engine CVH uh, 1987 oh, okay <clears throat> it's original motor but uh, uh, modified <laughs> now is that the original motor that was placed in this body when it was oh, yeah. made mm -hmm. oh, okay <laughs> And so they're downdraft carburetors. What kind of carburetors are they? Webers. Webers. So you went for reliability and dependability here. Well, I wish I could. I wish I could depend on it a little more. I haven't got the carburetors straightened out enough to where I feel real comfortable with it. It it stumbles and hesitates a bit uh -huh. until you get on it. And uh huh. Then it, then it runs the main around. jets come in then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's the idle circuit. If you know uh, the Weber's, apparently there's three circuits. There's the idle circuit, the accelerator circuit, and the main, main jets. Yep. And I think the problem's still in the, in the idle, idle circuit. Idle yeah. circuit, a little too lean. Uh, I think it's too rich. Actually. You think it's too rich? Yeah. Well, it could be. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things you're going to have to monkey with. I, I love that little thing there that holds the hammer in case you just got to tap something. Right. Yeah, wooden mallet on the side so it don't <laughs> dent it and well, brass. It's for the... Oh, knockoff knock wheels. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's for the knockoffs. True knockoffs. Oh, yeah. So this is a restored Morgan, is that right? No. No? Well, it's been repainted and the interior was redone. Uh, but that's the extent of it, except for the engine work that I did, and the dashboard. I did the dashboard. Uh, that's a sharp car. Yeah. It is a sharp car. So do you drive it much around Anchorage, or do you get out much with it? Not really. Not a whole lot. I live out in Eagle River. And, oh, okay. Um, this was the farthest I've taken it from home, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for bringing it out here. Yeah, sure. sure. Thanks for leaving the hood up for a second for me oh, to okay. actually check this engine okay. out. Can, I, I, there is nothing more, uh, nothing I love more than when somebody has an Alfa Romeo and they pop the hood on it, and you see that big, wide, yeah. double overhead cam. It's like, that's like... Yeah, nice with the aluminum valve covers. Aluminum valve covers on it. It's like... But I can't... Just, yeah, let's see. Uh, but yeah, well, I this makes me like salve of a drool on the side, you know. <laughs> this is sharp though. I like this, and I, I like the rubber, the copper. It's 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 it's, it's nice. I mean, this is sharp. Yeah, I tried to dress it up a little. Uh huh. Well, thanks for bringing it. Sure, you bet. <laughs> well, I stuck the camera on the rear end to look at the rear end, but you describe what the rear axle was used in it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they may be using something different now. I'm not sure. It's 10 years ago. Yeah. They are sexy little cars, though. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Like I say, it's, it's one of the few things out here I've actually driven. And, uh, and, and, and I, I just fell in love with it. You know, no, you one, one drive and you just hook. The one you drove had a, what, a V8 you said? No, 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 it was an inline Ford. Inline, okay. I wonder what... But it wasn't the Caterham, it was... It was, it was uh, a Caterham. Oh, yeah. it was, okay. Yeah. He huh. built it in his garage here in Alaska. What color was it? Yellow. Just, just like that. I'll be darned. I didn't know there was nothing like that up here at any time. He's gone now. You say he rotated yeah, out. Yeah, he rotated out. He was with the 6981st Intelligence Squadron. And uh, where did he live? Did he live on post, or was it? I don't know where he lived. 
He was head of security. There was a Kiram uh, off of uh, Tudor, not, you know, Tudor Road, out near the corner where Tudor turns into Muldoon. And I remember seeing it. There, somebody, I figured he was with military. Somebody had an apartment there, and it was a little, it was yellow, but it was lighter than this, I think. And I always wanted to stop and talk to the guy. I never did. That's long before I owned mine. That's the only other one I've seen it for recently. There was a guy, uh, the guy, he was from England. He built the first Lotus 7 up here. His wife took a extended trip to visit relatives down in lower 48, so we thought he'd occupy his time by building the 7. And he built it in his living room and had to take the front window out to get the car out of the out of the house yeah and then he and a friend that one of the stories is they went down in the Kenai to go fishing and they caught two big kings where do you put two big kings in a lotus yeah, they strapped them on the back behind the roll bar <laughs> came back with two big fish strapped there in the back of the car uh, well they are fascinating cars light and nimble and just fun to drive and you get yourself a joy there but now that I know about your Miata I'm yeah. like I'm, I'm like oh man yeah yeah that, that, that's pure sex, yeah. That's, that's my A little different thing, but still, it's got Corvette power, but not the bulk of a Corvette. I like right. the size of a Miata. It's just really handy. And yet, it's... it's Did you do the instant engine installation on that one? No. The uh, Poison and Flying Miata down in uh, Grand Junction, Colorado does it. Oh, okay. And they've done probably 30 to 35 uh, so. And it still handles good? Oh, yeah. It only adds uh, 1%, no, 1.5% extra weight on the front. Really? Yeah. That's you ought to, I'll tell you what, pick up the July issue of Road and Track magazine because they test one of the new ND models that has the V8 in it. Okay. And the uh, thing did, uh, it, it has the same performance as mine because it's got 525 horsepower, about the same weight. It did 0 to 107.3 seconds, so that's how fast it is. That's quick. So, yeah, the latest issue of Road and Track is the first time anybody's actually put a uh, you know, an official stopwatch on them for all the different things that road track tests for. And uh, they really like it. I like my model a little better because it's not, I don't know, the ND, the cockpit's different. Mine roll bar is really, it fits well, and then the ND, it's hard to get a roll bar in the cockpit because it's sort of enveloped a little bit or something. Uh -huh. But they're good cars, and I think the ND weighs about what mine did. The NC, which is the third version, started gaining weight and it weighed maybe a couple of hundred pounds more than the previous one but now they've gone back to you know it has aluminum doors aluminum hood it's uh, and mine looks stock uh, I was going to try to get a 427 Chevy in it <laughs> and we were lacking about an eighth of an inch of clearing the power steering cylinder with the, putting the 427 in and they said well you can go to manual steering we could probably you know we could work that way and I thought well it's going to be really tough to drive and is there a dry sump engine? That one is, the 427 is a dry sump. And I think I would have gone, converted to wet sump because there's very little room in there to put a sump tank. Yeah. So it would have been a wet sump. And I was looking at this engine builder that Mast Engineering made a 427 uh, that had, uh, I think it was 620 horsepower. But my car, uh, without modifying the rear fenders, you can't get a bigger tire on right. it. And I would have wanted a bigger tire if you got that much power. Because even now, I can spin my wheels in fourth gear if I want to, just any time. So uh, I'm sort of glad I didn't do that. I've got plenty of power. And so you got a 350 or a 383? Uh, it's a 6.3 liter, which is... Uh, what is it? 365, 366? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, it's basically a 350, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 6.3, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to know what the uh, designation is. I can't remember. Mm. And that's a bulletproof motor, you know. Oh, yeah. Loop. It's a crate motor. I mean, yeah. It just came from Chevy with a full guarantee. And, and then I've got a uh, Camaro uh, gearbox, six-speed. You know, the top two gears are overdrive. You don't really need anything more than the fifth gear. Yeah. And it is the best shifting transmission I've ever it's like a bolt action rifle I mean it's just really precise and it's got a Cadillac rear end made by ZF in Germany the new ones they're making now on the ND I think they've got a Ford rear end but fully independent suspension right. and beefed up brakes and, and so everything's balanced to work well so it's a, it's a good combination well this car is beautiful it's amazing you drove it up the Alcan yeah came, other than that accident it came through pretty well well I had a wheel bearing go out 
in California, but that got fixed pretty quick. So uh, front or rear? Rear. Uh, the uh, they'd had a manufacturing defect back in the, when this car was when the parts were made in 2007, and most people had got it fixed by then. But mine it took me three or four years to finally put the car together, and so I was unaware that there was a they had too much play in the bearing retainer, I guess. Ah. And I was driving to the Monterey Historic Races, and the night before, stayed in a motel and then joined a bunch of guys to go to the races and. The, the rear end was really wobbling around and it, we felt the wheels, they were just extremely hot and the only thing that was holding the wheel on was the disc, the disc brake. The disc brake was holding the wheel yeah, on the car. So uh, uh, there was a guy that somebody referred me to who was at the races who restores uh, Lotus Elises and DeLoreans of all things, but he was very familiar with the car and they flatbed at his place on the Sunday night and the Monday night I was back on the road again. It really worked out well. Excellent. So, well, we are wanting to take off, so if you would like to stay, I can show you where the bus stop is. Or no, I, I got to be going here. Um, I want. I'm a bus taker. Thank you so very I'm much. Good, thank you. It was yeah, an yeah. honor meeting you. It was an honor meeting you and learning that you're interested in these cars. Oh yes, and uh, I'm next door neighbors with Ken Morton. So if you want to ever get in touch with me okay. or take me for a ride, okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Nice yeah, to meet we'll you. See you.